So this is where this is where Jesus says you have to recite this prayer. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. That's a joke, right? Jesus doesn't say you have to recite this prayer. He says what? Pray like this. It's the body of the prayer, right? It's what is in that prayer that we should recognize when we communicate with God. Now, God doesn't mind us, you know, like I said earlier, throughout my day, Lord, help me with this, right? That's like my constant conscious contact with God, always acknowledging him and everything that I do. You know, before I, before I make a decision, Lord, help me, give me, the, give me what I need to make the right decision, that kind of thing. But there are times, right? At, listen, at least once a day, we need to separate ourselves from all the mess and focus on God and commune with God. Not just in morning devotions because you have to be there, right? You, in your relationship, have to communicate with God. It's part of the relationship is communications. It's huge. Each one of us has to have a time where we step away and focus completely on God. You know, here in this chapel, yeah, but also in your own personal time with God. So we're going to look at this morning, we're going to look at a lot of scripture from Psalms. And as I said Wednesday night, I, I went over the, the outline of it, uh, but now we're going to dig deeper into pray like this. But first, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you again for having us here this morning. I pray, Father, with gratitude. I'm so thankful. I am grateful that you have us here this morning, that we have this time. Help us, Lord, to open up completely. Help us to, to put aside anything in our minds that would get in the way of us focusing completely on you right now. Use me, Lord. I am your servant. And even with all my flaws, I know, Father, that you are flawless. And you can use me, Father, so I pray. I'm grateful. Speak to me, Lord, the words that I need today, because I need new words every day. I need, I need the guidance that I need to overcome each day's issues. I need the strength each day to do the work that you would have me to do. But use me, Lord. Speak through me that each one of us might hear what you would have for us to know today, because we definitely need it. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for loving us this way, that you make it possible for us to seek, to find, and to know your will for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray this prayer. No. Pray like this. And really, the beginning is an acknowledgement of God for who he is, right? We are recognizing that he is holy above everything else. Pray like this. Praise, power, provisions, mercy, deliverance. It's all there. And it, again, as I just shared, it's, it, it comes down to us coming into and maintaining a relationship with God. Having that constant conscious contact with God, praying always. Psalm 27. Well, we're going to look at a bunch of scripture from that. It was part of our responsive reading. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. I think sometimes we think we're far, too far gone for him to show mercy. But he is not a man that he would think like us. You know, we're, we're, 
we have our limits, right, on showing mercy to those that have offended us, but God is still there no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been. So pray like this. So first we have to acknowledge God's holiness, right? We praise him. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. And again, these are two different versions of the same portion of scripture, two translations. The second one there is what you find in the, 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 the Life Recovery Bibles in your pews. These are green. The first one is what you see in that NIV version that's there, that's maroon. So let's look at Psalm 99, verses 1 through 9. Acknowledging God for who he is. The Lord is king. Let the nations tremble. He sits on his throne between the cherubim. Let the whole earth quake. The Lord sits in, his, in majesty in Jerusalem, exalted above all nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Your name is holy. Mighty king, lover of justice. You have established fairness. You have acted with justice and righteousness throughout Israel. Exalt the Lord your God. Bow low before his feet, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also called on his name. They cried to the Lord for help, and he answered them. He spoke to Israel from the pillar of cloud, and they followed the laws and decrees he gave them. O oh Lord, our God, you answered them. You, you are a forgiving God to them, but you punished them when they went wrong. Exalt the Lord, our God, and worship at his holy mountain in Jerusalem. For the Lord, our God, is holy. So as I'm reading that, I like to, as my mind goes, because i got to think of more things than once at a, at a time. So I'm thinking about as I'm reading that, whoa, just think about that little bit of history there, you know, it, what happened with all of them during that time? There was a lot of them denying God and his word and his laws. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain in Jerusalem, for the Lord our God is holy. He knows who we are. He calls us to be holy as he is holy, but he knows who we are. He knows that we'll come up short. Forgiveness comes from someone from from God who is so loving and knowing and full of compassion you were a forgiving God to them because they needed it but it also says you punished them when they went wrong well sometimes we need correction right sometimes we need that correction but in all that God is holy. God is power. We should acknowledge God's power. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in our life recovery Bibles, may your kingdom come soon. <laughs> Sooner than later, please. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're going to jump to Psalm 68. Verses 28 through 35. Summon your might, O God. Display your power, O God, as you have in the past. You know, again, we try to put God, you know, in, in terms of what we know. And we, we look at power, maybe, of this world, and we try to, we try to, limit not on purpose but by doing so we limit the power of God in our minds it's not limiting his power because he is still all-powerful but we limit what he's capable of doing 
because we feel we have seen ourselves fail in the past. We have seen ourselves over and over and over again relapse or give back into the same sin or, or do the same thing. But God is all power, right? That no matter what we've done in the past, no matter how many times we've tried, he has the power that we need. The courage, right? We need the courage. We ask God for the knowledge of his will for our lives and the power to carry it out because we know on our own, even if he tells us what to do, on our own strength, we're going to come up short. So we have to make sure we add that part, right? That strength, the, the courage that we need, the power. I'll start over again. Summon your might, O God. Display your power, O God, as you have in the past. The kings of the earth are bringing tribute to your temple in Jerusalem. Rebuke these enemy nations, these wild animals lurking in the reeds and in the herds of the bulls among the weaker calves. Make them bring bars of silver and humble tribute. tribute. Scatter the nations that delight in war. Let Egypt come with gifts of precious metals. Let Ethiopia bring tribute to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Interlude, that's going over, right? Sing, <laughs> sing to the one who rides across the ancient heavens, his mighty voice thundering Israel. His strength is mighty in the heavens. God is awesome in his sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. God gives us the strength to overcome all enemies, all enemies, even if they're up here, right? When we come under attack, right, from those around us, we see all these things happening around us, and temptation is, strength, is great. And we, and we think there's no way that we can, we can turn away from those things that we are tempted to do, but God is more powerful than that temptation. Again, we got to back up, though. It requires us to be in a relationship with him through prayer and meditation on his world. We're, we have to be in this relationship with him to receive, right? We re recognize him for who he is, we come into this relationship, and we have to make sure we maintain this relationship through prayer if we want power, because we need it, or we're going to give back into sin. Ask for God's provisions. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us the food we need. So we're up to Psalm 65, 65, 5 through 13. You faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds. Our God, our Savior, you are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail to distant seas. You formed the mountains by your power, and you armed yourself with mighty strength. You quieted the raging oceans with the pounding waves and silenced the shouting of nations. Those who live in the ends of the earth stand in all of your wonders. From where the sun rises to where it sets, you inspire shouts of joy. You take care of the earth and water it, making it rich and fertile. The river of God has plenty, wa plenty of water. It provides a bountiful harvest of grain, for you have ordered it so. You drench the plowed ground with rain, melting the clods and leveling the ridges. You soften the earth with showers and bless its abundant crops. You crown the, earth, the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. The grasslands of wilderness become a lush pasture, and the hillsides blossom with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks of sheep, and the valleys are carpeted with grain. They all shout and sing for joy. Forgive us, Lord, when we think that we don't have enough. God supplies all that we need. Now, we might have to put in some effort, right, to obtain it, but God supplies all that we need. 
I think the problem comes when we start looking for that going past. And, and again, I don't have a problem with some of the things that we like. I, I, I like to have some, some things. I like to have hobbies. I like to do certain things. I like, but God supplies all that we need. I think what happens is when we separate ourselves and we're not in that maintained relationship, we can get a little too um, focused on things other than those that we need. It's one of the main issues that I've always said for years. It was my issue is that I couldn't figure out, I couldn't differentiate between my wants and my needs. You know, it was pretty easy for me to talk myself into a need, right? I need that, but it wasn't really a need. And we focus on those things that are just really wants, and they become God. Because we're so focused on things other than God, we don't have time to focus on God. We have to know that he supplies our needs. His provisions are enough. He shows mercy. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. And there are many on both sides. You know, it tells us, you know, that if, if we come to the altar seeking forgiveness and remember that we have something against a brother, we should go and make that right. See, holding on to grudges and resentments are like a cancer. They hold us back. Just like everything else, if we have all these things, we can't focus on God because we're focused on, you know, the person that hurt us or the person that owes us money or the person that keeps asking me for cigarettes and, I, and he doesn't ever give me a cigarette, right? He, he, he asked me for the pair of pants that I got and, and, right, even little things. We can get resentful. We have to be able to forgive because if not, we hold on to that stuff and it gets in the way of our relationship with God. Psalm 131 through 7. From the depths of despair, O Lord, I call for your help. Hear my cry, O Lord. Pay attention to my prayer. Lord, if you kept a record of our sin, who, O Lord, could ever survive? But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. I am counting on the Lord. Yes, I am counting on him. I have put my hope in his word. I long for the Lord more than centuries long for the dawn. Yes, more than centuries long, long for the, the dawn. O oh, Israel, I hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is unfailing love. His redemption overflows. He himself will redeem Israel from every kind of sin. We can call on the Lord, and he hears our cry. I like to pay attention to my prayer. <laughs> Sometimes we get that way, don't we? You better hear me, Lord, because I can't do this anymore. But yet, we're holding on to things that we shouldn't let go of, that hold us back. He himself will redeem us. And that's deliverance, right? We ask God for deliverance. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I love this. Don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Because, man, there's a lot of temptation around. There's a lot of things... You know, not just those things that are part of our past, but the new stuff, right, that pops up 
We could talk ourselves into it. Well, you know, nowadays you got stuff over the counter. Well, it's over the counter. It can't be bad. The problem is anything that distorts, right? If God comes in and transforms the way we think, we need to have a clear mind to stay focused on him. We can't go back and start putting stuff in our bodies again that's going to distort the way we think. Cloud the way we think. Because it also changes the way we are, the way we feel, the way we experience his presence, our relationship with him. It gets in the way of us being able to focus on our creator. Psalm 27. This needs to be our focus. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am, atta I am attacked, I will remain confident. You know, there's a couple words we could replace in there. You know, the Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? Even when sin, even when temptation to give in to sin, even when temptation comes and, and starts making, you know, causing me to rationalize and justify, and, and, and I'm looking at old behaviors, and I'm looking at new behaviors, and I'm looking at anything that I know is not in line with God's will for my life. I will not stumble. I will not fall. They will. Though it all comes back and it's all in my head and it's all right there, I will not be afraid. I will remain confident. Most of us initially turn to God for the help he can give us, namely his power to free us from the power of our dependency. We may be surprised to find that as time passes, we turn to God out of a desire to be near him. As we discover how wonderful he is and how much he loves us, we draw near to him because of the joy we experience in his presence. King David gave us a glimpse into the relationship, his relationship with God, saying, the one thing I ask the Lord, the thing that I seek the most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple, for he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices of shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Now, this goes beyond a building, right? right? When he's talking about a sanctuary... His temple. This goes beyond an actual building, a temple, a building. When we come into a relationship with God, right? You've heard this before. We come into his kingdom, right? When we come into this relationship with God, we are separated from outside. We are in his sanctuary. When we are in prayer and meditation, right, of his word, when we are in a constant conscious contact with God, we are in his sanctuary. David found great joy in improving his conscious contact with God. God is always there, but we are not always aware of his presence. Right? In that relationship, in that presence with God, if we, if we are not in that constant conscious contact, we might find ourselves outside. Our relationship with God usually begins with his meeting our desperate needs. Right? That foxhole prayer, Lord, please just save me. 
But when we begin to focus on getting to know God as an end in itself, we will discover that he will give us what we have always desired, the joy of being close to our loving creator. Then we will see that he can be trusted with every area of our life. So we're up to the kingdom part, right? For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Psalm 27, 7 through 13. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. We have to always be responsive to God's call. When God is speaking to us, and it might not be auditory in our heads, right? I don't think I've ever heard God speaking in a verbal sense. But when you come over, when you're in prayer, when you're in this relationship with him, and you're about to do something, and he says, whoa, don't do that. We have to respond by doing what he said, don't do that. When God comes in and says, whoa, them people out on the street, they need to know about me, then it's up to me then to even though I don't want to go to Nineveh, go out and talk to them about the Lord. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me. O oh God of my salvation, even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Third step prayer. Teach me how to live, O oh Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are awaiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done, and every breath they threaten me with, in every breath they threaten me with violence. Yet, I am confident. Are you confident? If not, ask God for faith, <laughs> to increase your faith. I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. I wait patiently for the Lord. Sometimes not as much as others, let's say. I wait patiently for the Lord, right? Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. So, prayer. We must follow God patiently and confidently, waiting for him to protect and lead us. Prayer is a conscious contact with God. It's a way of having that conscious contact with God. Prayer is our opportunity to main, maintain a conscious contact with our Creator. Prayer, I believe, is how you got here this morning, while you're sitting in these seats, and it's how we get direction for our lives so that we never have to come back to a facility like this ever again, unless it's for a visit. It's possible, man. It's possible. I haven't said this in a long time, but, you know, you never need a program like this ever again if you come into and maintain a relationship with God. You never need to be in a program like this again. But it takes daily, right, throughout your day, a maintained, constant, conscious contact with God. That's how it works. So pray like this. It all has to do with a conscious contact with God through prayer. And in pray like this, praise, power, provisions, mercy, and deliverance. And this is how we can stand firm in our walk through this life until we take that last breath. We're not always going to get it right. But the closer 
our walk with him, the less mistakes we'll make. The stronger we will become, the wiser we will become. But it takes a constant contact. It takes prayer. So we're going to pray. Let's pray. Amen. Here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this place. I thank you, Lord, for each person here. And I thank you, Lord, that your presence is here with us. You've given us information. And I pray, Lord, that you give us the courage to own it. And we didn't just hear it with our ears. We, we've heard it deeply. We know. Not just believe, we know that you are with us. So help us, Lord, each day, not just here in this chapel, but each day to have this closeness with you. I pray, Father, for each person here that uh, they know you as not only creator of all things, but sustainer, self, self, you know, deliverer, all of it. You, you meet every single want, one of our needs. You make it possible for us to put that old self behind us. And you've made that possible through Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that we know him deeply, not just as someone in, in a book that has some good words for us, Lord, but as our Savior, as our Deliverer, that you, Lord, gave us this opportunity that through your Son, Christ Jesus, we can be forgiven of our sins. We can be transformed of the way we think. What we believe, Lord, the old is gone, the new has come, Lord. And I pray, Father, this morning that we all know this is truth, that we're sinners. There's nothing we could do to save ourselves but to accept that which you've given, which is your son, Christ Jesus, into our hearts as our personal savior. We come to you, Lord, repentant, never wanting to go back to that sin that has caused us so much pain. Help us, Lord, to surrender all, everything that's not in line with your will for our lives. And as we accept Christ into our hearts, Father, you speak to us now, Lord, through the Holy Spirit. We get to read your word, and as we meditate upon it, you make it real to us. It's living in us. And you will point out things, Lord, that need to change because your, your word tells us to do things that we've never done before. And it tells us to stop doing things that we know are wrong, Lord. So as you speak to us through your Holy Spirit, I pray, Father, that we can let go of those things that get in the way. You meet all of our provisions. We can get pretty focused on things that aren't of your will, Lord. So give us the courage now, Lord, to make a commitment to accept, to come into this relationship through Christ, but to also follow, to continue in everything that we do, to seek, to know, and to be in line with your will for our lives. I thank you, Father, this morning for making all this possible through Christ Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen.